Hi there, Jen Roke here at StampCampWithJen.com. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Summerfield, Florida, and welcome to my weekly Facebook Live. If you're watching me live, welcome. If you're new, please say hello. If you're not new, please say hello. But I go live here every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, um, and currently we are a little bit over halfway through my 12 weeks of fall and Halloween series. Yay! I even wore my fall Hocus Pocus shirt that I just got. I love it. My mom and I went to a little craft show or a, like a craft fair last weekend. And I bought this and like some other little fall t-shirt. I love it. Hi, Sue Stefan. Thanks so much for joining me today. Um, as you guys join, please say hello if you wouldn't mind sharing my video as well and inviting your crafty friends to join along with us. I would love that. Um, and please give me a thumbs up or a little heart and let me know if you like the video and also do that if you're watching the replay from my YouTube channel, okay? Um, and don't forget to subscribe if you're watching from my YouTube channel and hit that bell so you never miss a video. Yeah, thanks mom. <laughs> so my mom came with me to the craft show or the craft fair and then she just helped me go from store to store and spend my money. She has a knack for helping me spend my money. Hi Case, welcome. Thanks so much for joining me. But yeah, so that's like her little trick. She likes to come with me to go shopping and then she just helps me spend all my money. <laughs> so I have a cute card to share today. We've been doing a lot of 3D product or projects and I thought it'd be fun to switch to a card for once. And I know um, not a lot of people make um, Halloween cards, but I have a really cute one to share today. So I hope that you'll give it a try. You could always translate it to uh, like a little treat if you wanted to, I'm sure. So, But before we get into that, I have a couple of announcements and we'll go over those and then we'll get into the project. So I hope you guys have really been enjoying my... 12 weeks of fall and Halloween series and following along. Hi Jessica, thanks so much for joining. Um, it's been so much fun and I'm actually gonna do uh, a Christmas one too. It'll be ramped up even more than this one was if you can believe it. <laughs> but I'll have more details on that a lot later. <laughs> a lot later when it gets closer to Christmas time, but we will do um, a fun Christmas series as well this year. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I have been getting ready for my craft shows, so you guys, by doing this, this is kind of helping me like come up with ideas for different product projects to sell at my craft shows too. So it's all you know coming together. It helps me with stamp camp. It helps me with like craft fairs. Lots of cool things. So, and I have a craft fair this. Saturday coming up. Um, it's going to be in Ocala, Florida. So if you're local and you can make it, I would love it if you would come by and say hi. Hi, Roberta. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, it's at a local um, Presbyterian church. All the details are at stampcampwithjen.com. If you click there's a little button in the menu that says um, calendar. If you click on that, you'll be able to see all of my upcoming craft shows that I'm going to be a vendor at and any other events that I have going on. Um, I have one craft show that I'm a vendor at this month and then two in November that I'm going to be doing as well, all in Florida. So if you're in Florida, like Central Florida area, and you can make it, I would love it if you'd stop by and say hi. All right, so let me go ahead and switch the camera around and we'll get to some fun stuff here. Let's see, oh, here we go. I'm always afraid I'm gonna hang up because I've done that before. All right, here we go. I have revealed nothing. <laughs> I'm always afraid too I'm gonna accidentally show my project when I flip it and I don't wanna show you guys too early. All right, so just some administrative stuff. So we have the weekly deals going on right now. Every week on Thursday, Stampin' Up! has been releasing different products. They're about 20-ish percent off. Um, and then each Thursday, there's a different group of deals. So 
this Thursday will be the fourth week. That'll be the last week of weekly deals. So if there's anything that you want, um, please go ahead and snatch those up as soon as possible because they are only while supplies last or through the 28th, whichever comes first. So if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. So I hope that you'll shop with me, Jennifer Roke, at StampinUp.com when you shop these weekly deals. Next we have, this is the Perfect Partners promotion. There's a few different stamp sets in the annual catalog and the mini catalog that don't normally have dies and that Stampin' Up! made dies to go with them. So these are only available through September 30th. So if you want the dies that go with these stamp sets, now's the time to order these. You'll be able to order the stamp sets as long as they're in the catalog, which I know Yeti to Party, Apple Harvest, and Trimming the Tree are in the July through December mini catalog, so you'll have through the end of December to order those. But the Birthday Piggy, Fresh Cut Flowers, and Waterfall Canyon are all in the annual catalog, so you'll have until about April of next year to order those. Hi Elise, thanks so much for joining us. I share the details of this in my newsletter. There's a new kit, a Christmas gifting kit. This has um, little pockets for gift card holders and they coordinate with the tags that you could put on a little gift. And it's really cool, like quick and easy um, kit for your, Christ your Christmas crafting coming up. And then this is the next paper pumpkin. It's a ho 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 kit. You need to subscribe by September or October 10th, sorry, if you wanna get this kit. Um, this one makes, I believe, nine cards, and then the next Paper Pumpkin kit that's coming out will also be a Christmas-themed one, but it will coordinate with this kit, and it's a tag kit, I believe. So if you want to get some kits to get your Christmas crafting going, these are great um, affordable options, and they always have great instructions. There's always YouTube videos that you can look up to show you how to put the kits together. Um, and they're always very helpful. So if you like to do something that's quick and easy, um, these are also great with kids, like if you have the grandkids or cousins or something coming over, um, this might be a good thing to get them to do like after Thanksgiving dinner and you wanna do something crafty and get ready for your Christmas shopping and gifting and things like that, this would be a good option for that. Now, this is something I'm so excited about. You guys are so awesome. I am so close to earning the Norway incentive trip that Stampin' Up! offers. This is really hard to do. Um, only about, I don't even think 1% of Stampin' Up! demonstrators earn this each year. It's very limited, um, but it is all based on sales and team building and lots of different things and I am super super close so um, I am hoping that you guys will place an order and help me reach my goal I have until September 30th to reach my goal and earn this trip um, and when you order through me now through September 30th I am going to reward you as a thank you for helping me reach my goal so if you place at least a $30 order you'll get a pack of dimensionals $50 or more will get the dimensionals plus you'll get to choose an embellishment of your choice 75 or more you'll get both of those plus the mystery bag and if your order is over 150, you'll get all of that plus a $40 shopping spree. So make sure that you head over to stampcampwithjen.com. All of my posts have a, a hot pink button that says click here to shop with the current host code. You just click on that button, it'll take you to the Stampin' Up! website and it puts my current host code in your shopping cart already. You don't even have to worry about it. Um, you must use the host code to qualify for this. Um, and all of the little, um, gifts will be sent out in mid-October. So if there's anything like the embellishment of your choice or the shopping spree where you have to let me know your choice, you just send me an email and let me know. So I really want to reward you guys for helping me um, get this goal. I never thought, I've only been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator for about three years. I never thought I would get to the incentive trip this early. So I'm shocked and truly humbled and I really, really appreciate everything you guys have done for me. So. Um, if you need any help or have any questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to help you and let's get to Norway. <laughs> All right. So that's my little spiel. 
And that is all I have for the little admin side of things. So now let's get to the crafting, right? You want to see what we're making today? Dun, da, da. We are making this cute little, it's like trick-or-treaters, you know, when the mom tells you, stay out of those haunted woods and stay together while well, they went through the haunted woods and it's you know the sun is setting they're going through the haunted woods probably through some scary parts where there's some witch in the forest and they're trying to get to some cool little hideout <laughs> but i just thought this was such a fun card and it really is it looks really cool and it's really very easy to put together hi diana thanks so much for joining us from north carolina so i'm going to show you how to put this together like i said it's really not that hard this die is so impressive. So this die is from the, I haven't put this on my magnet sheet yet, the Grove dies. It comes with all of these little, it's actually like a woodsy set. It comes with, in the bundle, you get this grassy Grove stamp set with the deer and the trees. This would be good for like sympathy or masculine cards. Um, and it comes with all these dies and the big die that we're using here is like this tree background die. So we're going to use that. And that makes, really makes the scene pop besides the, um, the blending that we're going to do. So to do this, let's go ahead and die cut this piece first. So I'll have all the measurements and the PDF that's on my blog when I post this tomorrow morning. Um, but I'm going to show you. So we're going to use the old standby, the dryer sheet technique. I'm going to grab my cut and emboss machine. Oh, and what I wanted to mention was when you get the bundle, which I always recommend, you save 10% when you get the bundle. So I always recommend getting the bundle, not only because you get everything that coordinates together, but you're, you also save. I've done that before where I just bought the stamp set and thought, oh, I don't need the dies. And then later the dies are retired and I go to make something and really kick myself because I wish I had those dies. So, all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take just a dryer sheet and I'm going to fold it in half and put it on my cutting plate. So I have my ma magnetic platform. I have a cutting plate and then the dryer sheet. And then we're going to take our cardstock and we're going to put it over the dryer sheet and then we're going to center this die over this basic black piece okay and then we're going to take our other cutting sheet and put it on top and run it through and what that dryer sheet is going to do is the wax from the dryer sheet is going to grab all of those little bitty pieces that are in the die and it's going to make it so much easier to peel that paper off without having to poke out all those little pieces. I'll show you here in just a second. So let's move this over. Love it, love it, love it. Oops. All right, so we took that die off. So it's just the dryer sheet and the paper now. And now what you want to do is you want to carefully peel that paper off. And you'll see that dryer sheet is just peeling all those little pieces out and it makes it so much easier and now that's all stuck in our dryer sheet and you still have a couple little pieces but it's not nearly as bad as it would have been if I wouldn't have used that dryer sheet so I highly recommend with any little detailed dyes like this using that dryer sheet technique because it makes it so much quicker and easier to get those die cuts done See, easy peasy. How quick was that? Super, super quick. Okay, so we're going to put that to the side. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do our blending. So we are using Fresh Freesia and Starry Sky. These are the two colors that we're using. That's it. Just two colors for this background. And my white piece is the same size as my black. This is what we're blending on. And then we're just going to glue it to the bottom of that die cut. Super, super easy, right? Okay, so I have some scrap paper here. I always have scraps left over from stuff that I print. I always have lots of printer paper. So we're using the Fresh Freesia and the Starry Sky and these fabulous 
blending brushes, which I love. I'm gonna keep the colors on top of each other so I don't forget here. All right, so we're gonna start with Starry Sky, and I'm just gonna take my blending brush and rub it in a circular motion on my ink pad to pick up that ink. And then, actually, I'm gonna make this a little bigger. We are gonna take that, and I'm gonna start off the paper and slowly blend onto the paper. And we're gonna go about two thirds of the way down here. And you start off the paper so that you don't get like a big splotch, like a big circular splotch on there. It's not as big of a deal if you do end up getting that on the top because that tree die cut is gonna cover it up. But you definitely don't want it in the middle like that. So I always start off the paper and kind of work my way inward. And you just keep applying more ink as you need to. And like I said, we're going to use the starry sky and go about two thirds of the way down from the top here. And then when I feel like that's about good, I think that's good right there. Now we're going to use our fresh freesia do the same thing. Rub it on our ink pad in a circular motion to pick up that ink. And then we're just going to come in from the side. My pad's getting a little dried out. I should probably re-ink it soon, but that's all right. And just keep picking up the ink with the brush and reapplying here. Like I said, I, I know a lot of people don't send out Halloween cards, but I just couldn't resist. I thought this was super cute. And if you do send out Halloween cards, this is a really fun one. And it's, like I said, it's really easy and it really packs a punch with that blending background and the black against it. It has a big wow factor for sure. All right, we're just going to keep blending. And we do want to overlap that fresh freesia with the scar starry sky just a little bit. It'll make the starry sky a little bit darker and it'll blend the two colors together to kind of give it that foggy background. And it'll make it like a darker purple color where they blend. It's really cool. So you definitely want to kind of blend that together. I do need to re-ink these pads, that's okay though. And I think this might be good, let's see. So a good way to test if you're happy with how it looks, I just like to take the top there and kind of lay it down and you can see it's got that nice purple, it's like a light purple going to dark. I'm gonna add a little bit more starry sky in that center up top just to kind of make it a little bit darker because I want it a little bit more like a night sky. So I'm gonna add some more color up here. So let's test it now. Ooh, yeah, really nice. I might put a little bit more towards the bottom here. You just really gotta kinda play with it until you're happy with how it looks. All right, let's see how that goes. Oh yeah, there we go. It's got more of that like eerie, foggy look to it, just like that. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and close up my ink pads. We don't need those anymore. All right, and our blending brushes here. So now I'm gonna show you how to get the kids positioned and stamped on there just right, okay? We're gonna use our Stamparatus for this one. So, anytime I use my Stamparatus, I like to put my stamp set to the left here, and that way I have a flat surface for my um, Stamparatus plate here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our um, blended background that we just made, and I'm gonna put it right up here in the corner, and then I'm gonna put that die cut right over the top of it, and I'm gonna use my magnet and kinda hold it in place, Please be careful with these magnets. I tell people all the time, really, really be careful with those magnets because if they get close together, they will slam together and you could pinch your fingers or hurt yourself. 
almost everybody, myself included, that I've talked to, they put them down on their desk and don't realize that they're close together. And I did that. I think I had my stamp rods less than a week. I had a bunch of stuff on my desk. I put my magnets down and they slammed together and one of them broke in half. So you really got to be careful. They're super, super strong. Oh, excuse me. All right. So we are using the... Did I take it out? No, I didn't take it out. So we're using this Scary Cute set. So this is the other bundle that we're using. Um, it's a stamp set, and again, it comes with the dies that go with it. Um, this is in the mini catalog. If you want to get this, this will be available through December or while supplies last. But I love the little shadows and all the sentiments with this one. This is a really fun set. And again, anytime you get a bundle, you always save 10%. So I highly recommend getting the bundle if that's something you're interested in. Okay, so now got that stamp set on here. So what I'm going to do to position the little kids here is I'm just going to lay them down right where that little opening is in the woods. And then put their feet kind of close to the bottom where that grass is. And then I'm going to take my plate and flip it over. And now I have the kids in place. So we're going to carefully remove that die cut. We don't need that anymore because now we're just going to stamp on this blended background here. And we're gonna use our Tuxedo Black Memento ink. Now, anytime you have these stamps that have this flat surface, um, you're almost always gonna to need to use your Stamparatus because it's almost impossible to stamp it, hand stamp it, and get a clean image. So you're always gonna to have to use um, your Stamparatus to get it a nice crisp image. I don't know why, it just doesn't really, the ink doesn't really stick very well to these kind of stamps. And you almost always have to use your Stamparatus to get it to line up. So we're just going to do this. I have my little Stamparatus press that my mom bought me. And I'm just going to use that to apply pressure. See, it's if I would have hand stamped that, all of that time blending and that ink would have been out the window. So we're just going to keep applying ink to our stamp set. And I had to do this, I think, like three times when I did it last time before I got it exactly fully inked so again it's still got more little holes there so we're just gonna keep applying ink and like I said just keep inking and re-stamping until you've got that coverage that you're looking for These little applicators are great if you have like shoulder issues or arthritis or anything like that. Um, I always felt like my hands hurt just trying to press with my fingers and I could never get that even pressure that I wanted. So thanks mom for my little Stamparatus buddy. <laughs> my little Stamparatus press. All right, fourth time's a charm hopefully with this one. There's still a little bit on there. I'm going to try it one more time. Really get in that center spot there with the middle guy. But yeah, the Stamparatus for this kind of stuff is so great. I love it. All right, let's try. I think this might be it. Yeah. Yep. I think we got it. All right. So that's how you get the kids stamped on our little background here. So I'm going to move this off to the side. Okay, so now when we put our little forest scene over there, they are walking through the woods. Isn't that cool? Oh, I love it. All right, so I'm going to use liquid glue. And I'm just going to put a little bit along the edges. Nothing too crazy, especially with these smaller edges here. I just like liquid glue for this stuff because it gives you a little bit of time to kind of wiggle things around and make sure they're where you want them to be. I probably should have put my silicone craft sheet under this, but that's okay. All right. 
All right, there we go. And now I can just use my fingers to get that glue all pressed along the edges. And if it doesn't end up coming out perfect, if you have some edges, you can just use your paper snips to trim it, which I probably will here in a second. Let's see here. Looks like this side's a little funky. So do any of you guys send Halloween cards? I'm curious. I don't know too many people that do, <laughs> but I love making any Halloween projects, whether it's a card or a 3D project. I feel like Halloween 3D projects are more popular, but I'm curious. If you do send out Halloween cards, let me know. I'm curious. I would love to hear if you do. All right, so now what we're going to do, we're going to pop this, well, not pop it, but we're going to adhere this down to our fresh freesia. And then we've got a basic black card base here. And I'm just gonna use Stamp and Seal Plus for these. Oh, and that ran out. I'm gonna use my regular Stamp and Seal. If I can get this to go. There we go. this on my fresh freesia. Okay. You give them out at work and you give them to grandkids. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. I'm just curious because like I said, I don't know too many people that do send Halloween cards. So if people do, I think that's great, but I don't know too many people that do. So all right, and then we're just gonna center this on the front. Well, I hope you guys give this one a try and send it out. I think this would be great for grandkids because it makes them get excited about going trick-or-treating for Halloween. I think that's really cool. Okay, so now the last thing we need to do is we need to do our little Halloween happiness up here at the top. So we're gonna pull out one of my favorite tools, this Embossing Editions Toolkit. I love this. So, one thing I want to point out with this, so if you're going to use this tray and use it over and over again, one tip I have is when you use, like say you use white embossing powder, I would rinse it out really good afterwards before you use like a different color embossing powder. That way you don't accidentally mix the two together and get like little white specks in like your gold embossing powder, for example. So that's my little tip for that. So I have a scrap piece of basic black, and I'm going to use my embossing buddy from the Embossing Editions Toolkit, and you can see it's got lots of that anti-static powder on there, but that's okay. And then we're going to grab our Bursa Mark. So that anti-static powder just helps any little flyaways from the embossing powder not stick where you don't want it to stick. You want it to stick on that Versa mark. You don't want it to stick on your paper background. So I'm gonna ink up this Halloween Happiness stamp set, which is in this scary cute set right there. Hi, Carol, thanks for joining us. Oh, I'm so glad you like my card, I appreciate it. Do you send out Halloween cards, Carol? I'm curious, that's what I was asking everybody a minute ago, was if anybody sends out Halloween cards. All right, so now we're gonna take our paper here and put it in our little tray and I have the white Stampin' Emboss powder that comes in the Stampin' Emboss Basics. Um, this has white, clear, and black so if you need this I think it's on low inventory right now so I would order it soon before it goes out of stock if it's not already. I can't remember if it was out of stock or low inventory. All right and then we're just gonna I like to lightly tap it to get any excess and this does come with a little brush so if you do have some crazy flyaways it's not a very fine tip brush but you can get like some big splotches of it and kind of brush it off your paper there but ours looks pretty good here and now all you do is you unscrew this edge here and then the powder will go through that edge right back into your little pot of powder, of embossing powder. Isn't that cool? And then like I said, what I would do now is I would just leave the cap off and go run this under warm water. 
Um, and I would clean that out and that way I don't have to worry about my any leftover pieces of white embossing powder getting into anything. All right, so now we're gonna use our heat tool and set this. Try to <laughs> the cord's not long enough. All right, so we're just gonna heat this up, and you'll notice it looks kind of grainy. And when it actually becomes like shiny, that's how you can tell that it's melted and set. So I'll try to do it kind of close so you can see when it starts to turn here. You can see it turning on the right there. It kind of becomes brighter and shiny, just like that. And that's how you can tell it's done. Okay, so now we're gonna take this little um, banner piece. This comes from those silo Scary Silhouettes dies and that coordinates in that bundle, that scary cute bundle, and we're gonna die cut this piece right here. Grab my big embossing machine with my magnetic plate here. And hopefully it won't move around on me. My magnetic plate, some of the magnets aren't cooperative sometimes. I think this will work, good. All right, I'm just gonna run that through. They don't, oh, I do have my tweezers. Yes, there's come the tweezers also that come. I guess I could have held them, but my paper was big enough. I didn't use the tweezers, but those are also part of that embossing additions toolkit. So you can hold your paper if it's not long enough. Um, and the die cuts do not die cut the children, unfortunately. The die cuts cut a little house, a cat, some little trees. So you could put like a one of the little kids behind here and do a little treat just like this. You could do the blending and let's see, I'll take this off to show you because this cat is separate. So this is like another little die cut. But you could do, just like we did with this card, you could make a mini version, die cut this die with the trees you could put a little kid there and do it on a little tree holder and that would be really cute too but yeah I wish they die cut the kids but they don't all right and then now what we're gonna do is take our paper trimmer and for this Halloween happiness we just want to make this left hand side straight so I'm just gonna put it in the paper trimmer just so we cut off that little banner on the side there and we make it a straight edge. Oh, just barely did that. And actually, I don't even think I barely cut it. I have to trim it just a smidge. I should have cut it over just a little bit more, but that's all right. All right. And now all we have to do is we're just going to line this up with the edge of that basic black Part, and we are going to use some Stampin' Dimensionals. And this is the only thing that's popped up on this card. We're just going to put a couple of Stampin' Dimensionals on the back here. And we're going to line it up along the edge of that basic black die cut layer. And voila! There are our Halloween cards that we did with our little scary background, our little desk nighttime background. All right, guys. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this project demonstration today. Um, if you need any of the products for today's project, I hope that you'll order them through me, Jennifer Roke at stampinup.com. And don't forget, I do have my incentive trip shopping um, rewards that you can earn now through September 30th. So help me earn that trip to Norway and I will reward you. So please shop with me. And whenever you go to stampcampwithjen.com and you click on any of the blog posts, you'll see a hot pink button that says shop with current host code. Just click on that and shop away and you can earn 
my rewards and help me earn my trip to Norway. I really appreciate it. I have till September 30th to earn it, so please help me out. I'd really appreciate it. I'm so glad you like this card, Kay. Thank you so much. I'm going to try to sell them at my craft show and see how we do, but usually Halloween stuff doesn't sell that well for me, <laughs> but we'll see. Maybe these cards will be a hit and I won't even realize it. Who knows? All right, guys. Well, until next time, be safe and happy stamping. Bye-bye.